If you want to be the best athlete you can possibly be, there's no other product than snack. My name is Andre Rozier, and I am Snack Strong. Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Viegas being joined uh, via Zoom with uh, Abel Sanchez. And Abel, I wanted to get you on the line uh, to get really your thoughts uh, of the fight that happened over the weekend of uh, Vasily Lomachenko and uh, Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez upsetting uh, Lomachenko. What did you think of the fight overall and, and how both fighters fought? I thought it was a very good fight. Uh, I, I didn't think that uh, I didn't. Oh, Abel, I think we I lost think you. I think that uh, Lopez was going to be able to get a decision. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. There uh, I didn't we think go. that Lopez was going to be able to get a decision. Yeah, I didn't think Lopez was going to be able to get a decision because uh, of the experience on, on Loma's side. But I think that Loma was surprised by the speed. I don't think the power had that much, even though you could see that uh, the young man was very powerful. Uh, I, I don't think the power was the issue. I think the speed was more of what Loma wasn't expecting. Um, the... Uh, the power he can deal with because he's got great defense. Uh, but he gave away too many of the first part, uh, first part of the fight, too many rounds that just were not, um, uh, it wasn't necessary for him to do that, I don't think. Uh, and since he did give away so many rounds, maybe he was confident that he was going to be able to knock him out late in the fight as he tried. But uh, Lopez proved to be a, a Proved to me that he's worthy of being a, a, a champion, not only worthy of being a champion, but the way he fought the 12th, he wanted to win the fight. He wasn't going to take nothing for granted. Uh, I don't think he knew, obviously, that he was that far ahead. But the 12th round, he fought like a champion should. And he, and he took it to Loma and won the 12th round easy. You know, I, I agree with uh, what you're saying uh, about the, uh, the first couple rounds, because I, I know... Um... They did an interview with uh, Lomachenko's corner, and they told him, like, nah, this is part of our plan. We want to be patient and really put it on uh, the later part of the rounds. But like you said, I just, you can't give a guy like that, like, like Teofimo, who's young, that much momentum and give him, like, the first five, six rounds. Like, that's a huge deficit to come back from in, in, in any type of fight. Yeah, you can't give anybody five, half of the fight uh, because even if you win the last six rounds, what if something stupid happens and your glove happens to touch the canvas or you slip and you fall and they rule it a knockdown? There's so many things that could happen that, that you put yourself in a position of a, 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 in a no-win situation because you gave away half the fight. Uh, I, I, I don't think they wanted to give away six rounds. Maybe they wanted to give part of that, but uh, it ended up like I think the speed was something that I don't think uh, Loma was expecting from uh, Lopez. It, on top of that, um, what did you think overall about how Teofimo was able to neutralize Lomachenko? Like, how was he able to beat him the way he beat him? Well, I think the speed had a lot to do with it uh, because once Loma pressed in the second part of the fight, uh, it was easy to get to, or easier to get to, to Lopez. But when you sit on the outside and, and try to be defensive with a young man that's got as much speed, he wasn't able to counter as, as well as he counters most of the time. Uh, so if you don't put uh, Lopez, and I think, I don't know if in the corner they were telling him that because obviously it's in, it's in Russian or Ukrainian, whatever it was, um, but he needed to press and he needed to make, uh, make sure Teofimo was going backwards. Coming forward is going to be a difficult fight. When you're that far down, six round down, you better be pressing every round. And if you're not, you're not going to get the rounds because uh, Teofimo's speed and, and, of course, power. But the speed was, uh, I think, the most uh, that uh, Loma had to deal with. The uh, scorecards were um, all in favor uh, of uh, Teofimo Lopez. But a lot of people online are, are saying that it was a lot closer fight than it actually was. Uh, Andre Ward uh, scored the fight a draw for uh, the official ESPN telecast. Did you think it was a closer fight than what the judges had? Almost definitely. I thought that Andre was right on when he was talking about maybe in the 10th or 11th. I thought going into the 12th, I thought the 12th was going to decide the fight for me. Mm. Uh, the knockdown and, 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 and everything else combined, I thought that it was an even fight up to that point, and I thought that whomever won the 12th round was going to take the fight. Uh, and Teofimo fought like a champion. Man. He, he took the 12th round and... And he took it convincingly for me anyway. So I thought the right guy won. The scores were lopsided, but I thought the right, the right guy won. So you had him up by a point? I, I, I had him up by winning the fight. I had him seven yeah. to five. Winning the, five. the last round was the, was the deciding for me. 
Would you be okay if it had, would have been a draw or you felt overall that Teofimo definitely won? No, I thought Teofimo won. Yeah. I, I, I thought that there was too much given away at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way that uh, Lomo would have been able to, un, uh, unless he dominated even more and he got a 10-8 round even or no knockdown or there was a knockdown, I thought going into the seventh, it's going to be almost impossible for him to win. But I did think that in the 12th, maybe the judges could have it even like Andre had it and the 12th round could decide to fight, but obviously not according to the scores. Now, with this, you know, where, where does Lomachenko go? Because a lot of people um, have said, you know, that for the past few fights, Lomachenko has started to show his age uh, because of the performance he's had against uh, Luke Campbell, Linares, uh, and, and others. Uh, do you feel that it's too early to say that his best days are behind him? Or what do you make of that? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how yesterday or before the fight, he was pound for pound or number one. It was never any, ever anybody any better. And one fight against a very, very good, good young fighter makes him old, makes him over the hill. That's ridiculous, man. That's an exceptional fighter. Uh, I, I'd like to see a rematch, to say the truth. Uh, but it's an exceptional fighter that uh, has accomplished a lot in his short career. Uh, he had a great amateur career and he's done a lot in the pros. I think that he had a, a guy in front of him that was determined. Uh, Lopez, Lopez is going to go very far. Lopez is a very, very good fighter as long as he keeps on track. But Loma is also an excep exceptional fighter. Yeah, I think it's it's a not a wise thing to say because we can't tell. But obviously, I think it's a big disservice to Teofimo because Teofimo is a great fighter. Like you could tell, like out of all the the young guys, uh, to me, I always felt that he was the most polished, most complete. Um, out of all those guys, like Devin, Ryan, all those guys. So I, I think, you know, and I've heard that, like, oh, Lomachenko was, was overrated. He was hyped up. You know, he, he, you guys put too much hype into him. I'm like, nah, man, like, Teofim was really good. You know, the, uh, I did a couple of interviews before the fight. Uh, I think I was in Orlando when I did them Thursday or Friday. And uh, one comment that I made was that I think that Teofimo is as close as we've come in the last 30, 35 years to a Roberto Duran. Mm. Uh, he has that meanness. He has that bravado. He has a, uh, the skill. Um, he still has a lot to learn. He still has a long way to go to, to be compared to Roberto Duran. But he's as close as we've come in a long, long time. But also, too, you have to give Lomachenko a lot of credit for going from 26 up to 35, too. I mean, you're talking about a smaller guy that moved up and, and the bigger guy won this time. But uh, in a rematch, I think the, the, uh, the strategy and the game plan would be a lot different. Uh, if Lomachenko starts earlier, is he able to, to do what he did so convincingly in some of the uh, late rounds? Who knows? But uh, it wasn't because Lomachenko grew old. It's because he had a hell of a fighter in front of him. Definitely. Um, he mentioned at the post-fight press conference, Teo did, that uh... – he likes the idea of moving up to 140 pounds and challenging the winner of Ramirez Taylor to see if he can go back to back undisputed. Uh, in your opinion, just as, as a fight fan also that uh, enjoys watching the fights, what, what do you think he should do next? Do you think he should move up to 140 or do you think there's still people that are intriguing for him at 135? I would want to see that. I would want to see that because I think he's got still has business at 135. Uh, he beat the, the, the guy that had a lot of belts, but not necessarily – all, all the uh, better than any of the other guys at 135. There's some good guys at 135. Uh, and if there's a rematch, I'd, I'd like that more than seeing him move up. You move up to 140, and now you're talking with some bigger guys. Now you're talking with some guys coming down from 47 down to 40. You're not talking about a 26 pounder going up to 35. So you have some bigger guys that are going to be able to take your shots and be able to do some of the things that Lomachenko didn't do the whole fight, and that's to back him up. Uh, he doesn't have. Um, Teofimo Lopez doesn't have that, that that big big power like say uh, uh, say uh, a Golovkin does or, or or even Canelo has very good power too. Uh, uh, so he has very good combinations, very good. I was very impressed with by his speed. Actually, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Very impressed by his speed, how he positioned himself and how he anticipated Loma's counters and how he moved his feet to to parry with his with his body and with his shoulders uh, and with his feet more than more than, I th than, I, than I'd seen in the past. Uh, I don't know if that was part of the plan. But uh, like I said, those guys are a little bit bigger. Uh, it'd be a little bit different. But I would like to see him fight uh, a rematch first. Devin Haney uh, went uh, to Twitter and said, hey, man, you, you can't call yourself undisputed until you fight me. Um, I think that'd be a great match. W what do you think about that? 
I think Devin Haney has to do what Teofimo did, fight some of the bigger guys, some of the better guys, uh, to really um, prove that he belongs at that level. He, he hasn't beaten the kind of fighters that Loma and, uh, and Teofimo have. Uh, and not only beat him, but beat him convincingly. Uh, I think that uh, Devin's a, it's a great talent, but I think he has a way to go. And what about Ryan Garcia? Because uh, Aram he just meant- put out a thing, man, that said that he, he wants, he would like Teo to fight the winner of Garcia Campbell. Uh, Garcia's not ready for that level yet. No? No. What makes you think that? What I've seen in, the, in his fights. Uh, he's got good hand speed and, and, and good power against lower, lower guys. When, let him fight uh, a, a top three or four guy and, and see how it does, as Teofimo did, as, as Loma did. Uh, those guys deserve those, uh, the a- adulation and, and the, all the, uh, the praise that you can uh, bestow on them, but uh, they fought the guys that needed to fight. Uh, Garcia is, is going to be a good fighter. He's going to go be a good fighter. Uh, Eddie Reynoso is going to do a good job with him, but he, I think Ryan Garcia needs to slow down and listen to, listen to Eddie, listen to Canelo, and he's got, he still has a little way to go. He still has to fight somebody for me. For you, does Teofimo take the place of Lomachenko in the uh, pound-for-pound list? No, I think Lomachenko drops, but uh, Teofimo would be above him, uh, but I don't, know, I don't know who's above in the pound for pound. For me, Canelo's the number one pound for pound. I mean, he's got a resume that uh, is beyond everybody else is fighting right now. So um, it, he could be ahead of him. I don't know who, uh, Terrence Crawford's also uh, in the top three. You know, so there's a lot of very, very good guys up there. Um, he's gonna move up obviously, but uh, I don't know if he'll move up into the, the top three or four. Top five maybe? Top five for sure. Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.